SOC stands for Security Operations Center. You might have heard about this word a lot in cybersecurity because it is something which is also always on trend and which is quite crucial and critical. Okay. It's something which has to be there, very important. It plays a very important role in the organization. It's it's um okay. It's it's like a business unit, I would say, which is there in order to, you know, um identify, detect analyze uh, respond you know or mitigate the security threats which we have when i say security threats it could be any type like you know uh, like malware phishing you know uh, attacks dos attacks so hackers malicious hackers which is the performance attack this is to uh, prevent first of all uh, to detect them analyze them and you know to uh, respond against them so that we can mitigate ourselves from those kind of threats okay so that is what SOC is. Now, when we are talking about SOC, here is overview. Security Operations Center, more commonly called the SOC, is a centralized unit. Yes, it's a centralized business unit. It is a physical or virtual location from which an organization monitors and manages its security threats. This occurs through the three pillars of SOC, people, process, and capabilities. We'll get to that. Uh, okay. See, this is this kind of a big rooms are there in the SOC, you know, multiple screens will be there, multiple uh, settings will be there. People will keep on continuously monitoring the activities. What happens? I will give you a simple example to relate with it. Okay. Hmm. You might have visited like, okay, you have went to a mall, everyone visit a mall, right? You have visited a mall. Multiple floors are there. Right, two, three, four, five multiple floors are there. Correct. Every floor floor would be having CCTV cameras. Correct. Now think about it in this way. So that you can understand what how it operates or what it actually does. This is a building. First floor, second floor, third floor, and fourth floor. Okay. One camera is over here another camera third camera maybe many cameras might be there involved like okay one on this side as well okay total eight cameras let's say okay now the point is will you think about it okay what you can do is every camera will be displaying a footage right this footage will be in one system let's suppose this footage will be another system 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 now the point is yes every footage will be displayed in different different systems but which one would you prefer to go with okay i'm giving you two options either monitor each one of them in different different floors in different different rooms or have a combined footage in a screen where those things are displayed like a security room where we have those screens like this a big screen where multiple other footages are displayed all those eight footages are displayed in one screen which one would you prefer security room combined display right something similar is what your sock works okay something similar it works what happens in this one is now let's suppose see we have systems different different systems are there right uh okay for example dipika will be having one system ashish will be having one system vikas uh summary and you know so on also not just system not just system we have routers right do you agree with the fact your routers also create the logs logs would be for those who are new logs i would say uh, any activity which you do a record is created of it which is known as a logs for example when you make a call to someone you have seen call logs are created right in those logs details are mentioned to whom you called what time what date what was the duration of the call and everything like that correct similarly do you agree with the fact the logs will be created of your router right your devices right uh, so many things would be there you can include like okay firewalls right not just firewalls okay you interact with the websites web servers databases right so many logs will be created now the point is 
you can definitely uh, see the logs of each and individual thing that is fine but don't you think it will be quite hectic to go through one by one you know for different different tools and like, the system which are there so better approach would be like centralized you know combined we are those things are being sent to the centralized unit where our team can sit and analyze those and monitor those logs so logs from different 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 sources are being collected into a centralized place and being monitored and being you know um, yeah monitored over there okay so if anything suspicious happens like you know we definitely write some rules and everything correlation rules we call them so that we can you know make some uh, connections so yeah so basically anything if anything happens what happens an alert is generated alert is generated and then we re, uh, react on those alerts anything happens i, I mean to say any malicious happening if anything malicious is happening anything malicious so hackers may be trying to make some attempts of an you know, attack maybe some uh, someone is trying to crack your password or guess your password so you know as per that alerts will be generated that will be uh, detected and then we'll be uh, analyzing it and you know working on it and then try to respond against it by mitigating that thing and you know finally uh, protecting ourselves from that kind of an attack that's what your sock does sock uh, acts as a command center where security analysts tools and processes work together to safeguard an organization's IT infrastructure. So, like you know, SOC will be there, the dedicated room which is equipped with large monitors, as mentioned in this image. Uh, large monitors will be equipped over there, displaying security dashboards where analysts work in shifts 24 7. Why I'm saying 24 7? Because it requires availability. Correct? Attackers can attack anytime, right? It is not like they will be having a uh, defined period like nine to five only and that they will perform an attack when you are working right it can be at any time and they will prefer the time where you are least active right so that's why 24 7 availability will be required for SOC we do the uh, shifts in the rotation wise but yeah things will be required uh, availability is required highly so here analyst works in shifts 24 7 to track potential threats in real time okay virtual SOC is all there where also is there where re remote team They'll be using cloud-based tools to monitor and manage security, you know, across the multiple locations. Then we have three pillars in the SOC, as mentioned over here. People, process, and technology. People would be uh, the employees, the personnel, skilled personnel. So it will be including analysts, uh, security engineers, threat hunters, you know, everything like that. Incident responders, all those. So for example, tier one analyst will be there. They monitor the dashboard and escalate the um incident tier 2 will be there investigating on those couple of things threat hunters will be actively searching uh for undetected threats using advanced analytics and tools you know like that now um that will be people we'll talk about this more um since we are we're going to talk about the responsibilities so i will explain that more later over there processes if we talk about if we talk about the processes, um, well-defined processes are there, which make sure that incidents are handled efficiently and consistently. Okay, you will always hear in the SOC two words: one is events, and one is incidents. Event means um, any day-to-day -day uh, like um, any activity which you perform. That will be known as an event. Anything which you do, you logged in an event. Okay, you opened a file, an event. You ran an application, an event. Okay, you open the website, an event. Incident would be any event which has some adverse effect will be called out as your incident. Okay. Now see, very simple example to relate with it. If I say I dropped a bottle of water, what will you call it? An event or incident? If I say I dropped a bottle of water. What if I say when I dropped the bottle of water, uh, you know, it, it, it fell on my foot and uh, I got an injury out of it. Now what we will call it? Incident? Exactly. Right? So any event which is having an adverse effect will be known as your incident. 
okay so similarly if i give you a technical example okay if i say um for sunita's account if you are getting login failure attempt for sunita's account what will you call it incident or event at the moment with this definition or with the situation which i've given you event if i say now like we are getting multiple login failure attempts within like you know quickly in five minutes of a time frame three minutes of a time frame for sunita's account only so now can we say it is an incident like after which there is a successful attempt also right i hope you got my point what i'm trying to convey over here everyone so as i was saying yeah processes right um so well defined processes ensure that incidents are handled efficiently and consistently so we have processes defined for that okay so in incident response we have playbooks for that which is like a step by step guidelines for handling specific type of threats like be it phishing dos like that so regular drills are also done we you know we go with the simulating attacks simulation are done like we have red team and everything like that which will be helping us to prepare for that so that we'll be testing our readiness you know which will be helping us to prepare in order to perform the response against the incident so those kind of a simulation are also done like in exercises in a simplest word right change management are also done like you know and we make sure that updates we ensuring like that updates to tools or policies do not introduce, introduce any new vulnerabilities right because whenever changes are done some things are in, new things are introduced so we have to always make sure that it is not introducing any kind of a vulnerability any weakness which can be taken as an advantage by the attackers okay and uh, okay uh, can you let me know in case if you think if i'm going a bit fast let me know i will pace it down okay now capabilities if you talk about like tools and everything people process and tools we can say so soc uses a ranges of tools to detect analyze and respond to threats effectively we have one thing which i have mentioned before uh, your sim solution which we'll see later it is known as your heart of your soc okay secure information and event management sim solutions so we have different type of them like splunk qrodar for example that is used for collating security events and to monitor them okay different different types things are there your edr is the endpoint detection or uh, end response like crowd strike you might have heard about them monitoring endpoints threat intelligence platforms are there um, you know they are like a recorded future for or anomalies to gather and analyze threat data right 